the hook in the vise, start the thread on. Touching turns. And then I want to cut this tag off. I don't chop at it. I make a V with the point of the scissors and just push. Um, I'm going to tie the ribbon at this point. This is gold oval, it could be using gold wire. Just slip it in below the hook. I'm keeping a wee bit of tension on it and the thread, combined with the, the turning of the thread, it's keeping it underneath the hook. And I'm, I've taken the thread back to the end of the straight part of the hook shank. The tail of this fly is pheasant tail fibres. Um, I want about half a dozen, I'm not counting them. So I've lined up the tips. I cut them off. Some people tear them off. Well, I prefer to cut them off. Because this is tied in a size 12 B175, it's really a still water fly, it's not a river fly. So I tie it that way. I make the tail a bit longer than I would if this was going to be a if this was a size 18 um, medium wire hook and likely leaded for use in a river. I would give it different proportions, but because this is, I'm going to I'm going to fish this in still water, so I'm thinking damsels that type of thing really. Um, I'm going to make the tail a bit the length of the hook shank. Now I want that to stay on top of the hook shank. I've got it in a pinching loop. I'm, it's between my thumb and forefinger. My thumb and forefinger are now sitting over the top of the, the hook. I've got the same grip when I transfer it. I've got a pinching loop there. I'm actually holding the thread between my thumb and forefinger. You, you should be able to see that that's a loose loop of thread there. It comes round over the back of the, the hook and I can pull up there. Do the same again. Now that should, those two turns should hold the, the tail in place. It should be bang on top of the hook shank. Um, I can wiggle it about as I need. But I don't really want to move it, I want to get it right that, that first time. And then, in, it can be in open turns, it can be in touching turns. Just tie the, the butts down. I tie them all the way to the front. It, it's not absolutely necessary, but I, I do it. I tie it all the way up to where the, the, the thorax is going to be, to give me a smoother underbody. Bring the thread back again, open turns. I don't go all the way back. I'm about to start on the dubbing. I don't go all the way back to where I've tied in the tail. Um, the reason for that will become, I hope, clear. I take a pinch of dubbing out of this car. I want a... Uh, this is nice, quite nicely mixed. There's a few different um, types of hair in there, a few different... Um, there's actually a bit of flash as well. But I want it to go into the thread. I don't take it like that and just wrap it onto the thread because I'll get a clump like that. That's no use to man or beast. I can't control the shape that that's gonna, gonna make when I wrap it around the hook. It will make a big, fat, ugly shape. I want to tease it out onto the thread and I twist it between my thumbs and, thumb and forefingers, or fingers, to make a, a slim noodle I can taper this slightly, but it, it really doesn't need to be. Slim even noodle. There. Now, there's a wee bit of thread there that isn't, has got very little or no dubbing on it, and I'm going to use that to bring the, the... So there's my first turn of dubbing at the tail. I'm holding the tail to make damn sure it doesn't go down the far side. That's me started the, the body of the fly. And I'm only using touching turns. I'm going back a wee bit where I need to. I would like a either an even um, thickness to the to the body, or pref I prefer if I can make a slight taper. 
so that it's getting fatter as it goes forwards. Now go forwards. And I think about there. There's a bit of a wee bit of taper going on there. It's not a perfect shape, that's fine. The, the the rib, open turns, even tightness, even spiral. Now I've got four turns in there. I'm probably gonna take well tie in the, the thorax cover, I'm probably gonna come back over that last turn. So I've tied that down. I need a slightly larger bunch of um, pheasant tail fibres for the thorax cover. I'm not going huge, but I'm using a wee bit bigger bunch. I don't need to worry about lining up the tips. There it is, a bunch. So I'm going to place these on above the hook jack. Again, I've got them pinching, pinching loop. That's a single loop, single turn holding them there. Give it a second turn. I can still move the material. I can still press it with my thumbnail and open up the fibers slightly so that they spread over the top of the shank. And then I'm bringing the thread back. I'm pressing the thread back into the dubbing so that when I fold this over, I don't want to see thread there, I want to see dubbing. Okay, now I've got three ribs left. This has come back to about uh, maybe slightly over halfway. Um, cut the stubs off close. And you can see that I've left a clear area here where the head's going to be formed. It's less than a millimetre. That's where the, the head's going to be tied in. Back to the dubbing. Again, a very slim dubbing noodle. Um, you can see there. And I'm going back this way. There's my first turn of material. Tighten it a little bit. And it's slightly, this is slightly bulkier than this. This is where the, if you imagine that's where the legs are, that's where the, the, the wing buds are folded up in, in that area. So that's a thorax there, chest. Bring the fibers over the top. I want them on top of the shank, I don't want them off to one side if possible. And Two turns of thread just to hold it in place, pull it tight, and then a couple of tighter turns. That's it held. Now, I need to finish a head here. I don't really want a tuft of these fibres sticking out of the head. So what I'm going to do is, I've pushed them back a wee bit from the eye, I'm going to put three turns of thread in there. Remember how many turns of thread that was. Cut close. Trim it up if you've left any stubs. Take the three thread, turns of thread out and now tie down the butts. I should have covered all the fibres there and I've left the eye completely clear. There's nothing stopping me putting my tippet through the eye. My normal habit at this stage is to make a whip finish. I use this type of whip finisher, this is a Matarelli whip finisher. Makes a figure four there. One, two, three, four, push, pull. Very neat. Tool. Um, 
I could as easily use my fingers and make the figure four. I've got the same figure four there, and I lead that finger leads the thread round. Um, the other method that's perfectly acceptable for securing the thread at the head is to make a, a, a loop. Just take the thread and make a loop like that. Back on it, turn, turn back on itself. And that's pulled down onto the, the head of the fly. Now, you don't do one of those. You do two, three, four of those. Um, and that it makes a very secure head. It's not, nothing wrong with it at all. And a very neat head if you do it well. When you tie off, when you cut the thread off, again, make the V of the, the tips. Uh, the scissor tips and just push and that's it I now need to varnish it um, I use clear nail varnish it's a top coat it's an outside coat it's tough stuff um, and I use a brush I have got a needle if this was smaller I'd be using a needle um, This brush has been cut down a wee bit actually. And it's okay. Now, that's one coat. Uh, this is a. What make is this? Miss Sporty. I've used Rimmel, I've used uh, Sally Hansen, various other makes. Um, it's got a solvent in it which melts all the greases and oils that are on the thread. Um, it soaks into the thread and then it hardens. The next coat of the same stuff will sit on top of that and will smooth out all the bumps. And if this is an exhibition fly, which this of course is, this has been thinned, so I'll make one, two, I'll make, maybe make four coats altogether to get the, the, the level of gloss and the level of um, precise finish that I want at the head. I will never use gloopy var varnish, and I really don't like, I, th I think, um, Super glue is, is a bad idea at the head of a fly. I'm looking for the tail to be on top of the hook shack. I'm looking for the ribs to be even. I think mine are relatively even. I'm looking for the thorax cover to be on top of the hook shack. And for the head to be clear. The eye should be completely clear. There should be no butts of the material sticking out over the eye. And stop me putting the, the thread through. And then the varnish should be locking the thread together. Um, making a hard, uh, durable head. And that's it. Easy fly to tie, um, uses some basic skills, very easy fly to, to um, change around. Change the colour, change the size, um, add a piece of, add a, a little um, piece of lead. If I was fishing this, if I was fishing a gold tears here in the river, it would be much smaller than this. It would be no bigger than a 16 probably more like an 18. It might have a wee gold head instead of the thorax or it might have the thorax and a wee bit of lead underneath the thorax uh, lead wire wrapped on before I dress the rest of the fly. Um, and I just scale everything down. I'd probably use a shorter tail. I wouldn't use a tail that's, that's the same length as the, the, the shank in that situation. And I might use darker hair. Um, this would fish on a floating line or on a, an intermediate line. I'd fish it where I thought there might be immature damsels around weed, that type of thing. Um, possibly where there were buzzers. Uh, and I'd, I tend to have a few of these dressed with a, an orange thorax, um, which gives you that sense of something um, hatching. Nice simple fly, very useful. That's it.